so much, Julie. Well, yes. Great. Thanks a lot. Welcome. Glad, I'm, glad that, I'm glad that you're here for your once a year stakeout. I wanted to, I mean, it seems like the, ele the elephant, at least in that room, there were three abstentions, including two permanent members. Now, admittedly, they didn't vote against it, but they said that they didn't think it was, that the, that the resolution is balanced. They didn't think that the process was open. Ethiopia also abstained. Sweden voted for, but also said that it wasn't balanced. I guess what I'm wondering is, can you address, you're, you're saying that the council is, you know, united in everything that you're saying, but some of the largest countries or the largest country abstained. My other question was just on human rights, since you mentioned it. Let, let, let me answer okay. you the first question. Paragraph 69, and I want to forget to ask yeah. you that. First of all, I have never said that it was unanimity. So, don't make something that I, I didn't say. Second, we respect the abstention of these countries. They believe that it's not balanced. Balanced in what? Between this who violate the, the ceasefire, between, and this who respect it. Morocco, since we withdraw from the uh, Girgarad zone, buffer zone, we didn't come back to this region. We didn't uh, do any unilateral uh, acts or the, uh, uh, that's something that would uh, violate or change anything in the field. So, but anyway, the resolution is the resolution. And in the end of the tomorrow, the world will remember only that the resolution has been adopted. And the important is what is in the resolution. And the Security Council has its rules, and we respect the differences. The other question? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to you, madam. I want to ask you, uh, just on, on and one of the things that, that those who said it was unbalanced said wasn't in it were yeah. restrictions that Morocco has put on Minurso and who it can speak to in the mission, and also on journalists and others. And where I wanted to ask you specifically this. Paragraph 69 of the report of the Secretary General says, says that Moroccan authorities continue to restrict access to Western Sahara for foreign visitors, including journalists, human rights defenders, and lawyers from Morocco, said that the human rights defenders remain uh, harassed, essentially. So I'm wonder what I'm wondering is, do you disagree with that? And yes. it's in the report. Totally. Okay. And we, we, we answered the Secretary General, ask the Secretariat or the Secretary General to give you a copy because we sent him the number of the delegation that visited the Sahara, the number of journalists, the number of parliamentarians. So uh, there is no, for us, there's no violation. They are taking just few or some allegation or one or two journalists. And I will uh, ask you a question. Do you believe that the journalist who is coming as, as a tourist is respecting his profession? There is an ethic. No, sorry. There is an ethic. If there is a journalist, he should be courageous and say, I'm a journalist, and I'm coming to see both sides. Not saying, uh, uh, hiding his identity and uh, 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 usurping the identity of tourists. This is not correct. This kind of journalist or this kind of tourist, we don't need them in Sahara. We need professionals. Just last week, two weeks, there was a journalist that requested to come to the Sahara from Sweden, and she was accepted. Two journalists from the last one. Uh, two months ago, there was a diplomat from the Swedish delegation, member of the Security Council. Why the report didn't speak about it? So please, try. That's my request to you, Mr. Mathieu. Try to be honest intellectually and professionally. I will have more respect to you. Okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm answering. Ask the, the Secretary General to give you a copy of what's our reaction to the Secretary General. There is all the details. Madame, le plus élémentaire, le Kalash. Il coûte, c'est le Kalash AK-17, environ 1500 dollars. Combien elle peut nourrir? Et au Sahara, il y a des milliers comme ça. Eh bien, il peut nourrir neuf personnes pendant un an. Let I let sport to other people in FIFA and elsewhere. Uh, please. Yes. I want because because you made this comparison of, of weapon sales and the cost of weapons yes, yes. to hunger. This is, can be said of many countries. I mean, there's, no, there's hardly a country on earth that doesn't have some economic pockets of deprivation. So that's why I wanted to ask you about the RIF. Do you see, I mean, how do you, do you acknowledge that there are legitimate claims for, for, for more, the need for economic opportunity? And there seems to have been some crackdown. Meanwhile, Morocco, as all other countries, except maybe Costa Rica, you're spending on the military as well. How do you distinguish between the flyers that you showed and the situation involving the RIF in Morocco? Thank you. I will start by the end of your question. We are spending more to defend ourselves, our territorial integrity, and to face the danger by the Algerian and 
uh, its uh, uh, mercenaries of Polisario. Going to the reef, I, I don't have the, 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 the habit of uh, uh, refusing of answering questions. We recognize that there was economic difficulties. We recognize that there was dysfunction of the government, of the minister. Just for your information, His Majesty the King take decision to sanction several ministers. There was accountability. Five ministers have been dismissed because they didn't fulfill their responsibility. Of course, we are now trying to correct that. We are now trying to win time to uh, uh, do what the government have to do. But all the, the requests of the population there are socioeconomic, one, and they are respectable. And we are doing our job there. Yes, I bet it. Uh, mesdames et messieurs, merci infiniment. The last one? one? Oh, thank you. Yes. I, I wasn't going to shout it out. I just I wanted to ask yes. you a, a resources question. Because I, I, it's the, the, that European Court of Justice decision that yes. said that the fisheries agreement with the EU could not legitimately inc include Western Sahara. Maybe if I'm mischaracterizing, tell me. And the decision in South Africa about phosphor phosphorus that they put up to. Do you see these as kind of outliers? Or is there still some legal argument that there's a, there's a problem with exploiting the resources of the area? The European Court said that the Sahara was not included in the agreement, which was correct. What? And, and the uh, European Union just decided to renegotiate the agreement, the fishery agreement and the agriculture agreement, and to include. The, the, this time, the Sahara will be included. You see? The Sahara will be included in the, in the two agreements with the guarantee that, first, the population will be consulted, Second, the population will benefit. And third, the Europeans will come and will see to, to, to how the population uh, is really benefiting of the resources of the, the, the Sahara. Thank you for your question. But don't, don't forget, please be neutral. I'm going to ask you for your bio. No, as, as you like, but the important for me is to be neutral and ethical in what you are doing. Thank you, you very too. much. Merci beaucoup pour votre And there you have it. He took some answers. Will write, be writing a story, but be aware. The majority of those he called on were Moroccan state media in terms of, <laughs> in terms of uh, neutrality. They're paid Moroccan state media. Okay, to be continued.